Welcome to our interview series, We Choose to Thrive, brought to you by Becky Norwood of The Woman I Love. We bring you stories of survivors who have chosen to heal, to thrive. If you are an abuse survivor and are starting or continuing your healing journey, these stories will provide hope, inspiration, and a knowingness that you are not alone. Join us in today's interview. My name is Diana Dunham. I am 58 years old. Um, I am a mother of two, a grandmother of three. I've been married to my second husband now going um, 32 years. And it's because of my husband's strength that I was able to get through what I did. I think I was maybe eight or nine, and it was my father that um, abused me. And it stopped when I was about 13, and I always thought it was just because I said it had to stop. But after I started getting counseling, and the counselor was the one that helped me realize it, is that the reason he stopped was because he had been abusing my older sister as well, and she had told my mother, so he then decided to stop. Well, thankfully it stopped, but it also had its repercussions. It did. And so I lived with that all my life, and it wasn't until I had, you know, was always in the background, I um, always had a relationship with my father, but it wasn't until I had my own daughter, and she then became five, that I realized that I had to protect her. Mm -hmm. um, and I was going to a counselor my husband's a Vietnam veteran, and I was going to this counselor because we were having marriage problems because of his PTSD, and she picked right up on it that that's, you know, I probably had some issues. We delved into it. I spent maybe eight months with the counselor, and at the time, um, I disassociated myself with my family. My grandmother passed away, and I wasn't able to go to the funeral. I think my mother sort of knew maybe what was going on, but nobody wanted to broach it. And then the counselor finally said, you know, you've hit a plateau. You either have to talk to your mother so she knows why. So I did. And my mother, the biggest fear was, would she believe me after all these years? And she did. Well, um, because it happened to your sister, too. My elder sister, unfortunately, she has nothing to do with our family. Mm. She disassociated herself from family. My sister is a social worker, and I had talked to her, and, you know, my father tried with her, too, and she thought, because she told Dad, no, that's why he stopped, and that's not why. He stopped because he was afraid of being caught. So then I talked with my mother, and she believed me, and we cried, and she went home and she confronted my father, and shortly thereafter, we found out that he had cancer. We confronted him in September, found out he had cancer in, October, in December, and he died the following July. His biggest fear to my mother was on his deathbed was, will I be forgiven? And he was. Forgiveness is something that we do, we do for ourselves. And yes, we do it for the others too, but it's largely for ourselves because that's the only way we're going to heal. Exactly. Yep. Where are you now in your healing path? Because he passed away, um, that added a lot of closure. You know, I didn't have to worry anymore. The counselor was great. You know, I don't, I don't go to counseling anymore. My husband, like I said, he stood behind me 100%. Very few people know. I know he knows. My sister knows. My kids don't need to know. That was their grandfather. So now I just want to give back and help people. Well, that's where I'm at. You, would you say that the counseling was the most positive thing that you have done for yourself? Yes. The counseling and the fact that I was able to tell my mother that she believed me and that we continue to have a very close relationship until she passed away in 2001. Yes. That's beautiful. So, so that helped with the entire healing process. Yes. Yes. Well, it took a lot of courage 
Thank you. for you to, to to take that step. And that is something that some of us come by early and some of us don't. I never blamed myself. I knew it wasn't right. And I know I wasn't the reason. And I, th I have a very, very strong faith. And I think that's one of the reasons that I survived as I did, because I knew that that didn't define who I was. I think it made me a stronger person because I did survive it. At the time when I disassociated myself from my family, I have two other brothers. And my youngest brother, he didn't really say much of anything, but I got a very scathing letter from my younger, one younger brother. And, you know, I had had a hysterectomy. They blamed it on the hysterectomy. I was going off of the deep end. And, you know, I could have retorted. I could have, but I didn't want to. I didn't, I didn't want them to think poorly of their father. And same thing with my kids. I don't want my kids. My son was very, very close to his grandfather. And I don't want him to be tainted by that. I want him to have the memories that he had. My mother, I remember, so we got the counseling and the counselor said, you know, your mother has to come in, and mom did, and my mother was a survivor of World War II in Berlin, so mm -hmm. I'm sure there were a lot of hor horrific things there, and my father, he came to the counseling, and he apologized, and... What a healing process. Yeah, that. but even in his mind, he felt, you know, your mother wasn't that loving, so it's, it, 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 even even though he apologized, I never really felt like he really, truly understood. And after my dad died, my mother and I had further conversations. And even in her mind, she tried to rectify. Like, you know, I think your father had been abused as a child. Well, it just doesn't make it right. <laughs> you know, I'm his child. He shouldn't have. And as I said, with my older sister, she had confronted my mother when she was 18. My mother didn't believe her. My mother called her a liar. And... We've really never had much of a relationship with her. I think she hooked up with the wrong guy. He probably does drugs. She's an abused, battered wife. When my dad died, she did come to the funeral. I thought she and my mom would rekindle, but they didn't. And then when my mom died, she didn't come to the funeral. Mm. So That's kind of typical. It um, is. You know, if, if the pain and the issue hasn't been confronted and... Mm -hmm taken care of. Yep. Usually there's such an isolation and it's happened in my family. I can't recall. I think I reached out to her and I, I do believe I had told her of my struggles and told her that I was here for her if she wanted to and she never did. So what would be your words of advice to somebody starting out on the healing? We know that this is an epidemic in our world, not just our country. It is in our world and it yes. isn't just to women. It's also to men. Yes. What words of advice would you give to somebody that has gone through this or deciding it's time to do something about it and to, to live life in richness and fullness? My advice would be find someone, anyone that you can talk to that you trust, that believes in you, and that can help you with the healing. And that may not be the very first person. I went through three counselors before I found the right person. So don't feel that because one or two people don't understand that the third or the fourth person won't. You need to find that person that you can connect with. Um, if religion is in your life, seek out religious healers. That is great. There are so many health self-help books out there. Uh, one of the books that my counselor had given me to read was a book that Suzanne Summers had written, short stories. They were just short stories, but just so you know you're not alone. Journal, journal is awesome. You know, you write this stuff down because the more you write it down and the more, not so much you remember it, but it empowers you that, you know, I can that I can talk about this, that I can, that I can survive this. And just know that it's not you. You know, you didn't cause this. You didn't ask for it. You didn't cause it. It's nothing that you did. It's the other person that is sick, is twisted, and needs help. 
Thank you for those wonderful words. Come to believe and, and really understand the healing power of story. Yes. By telling, writing our story, whether we ever publish it, whether no matter what we do, mere writing of it yes. changes us. It because does. In the process, we write a new story. We do. And whether you put it to or poetry or song or anything. I mean, I used to talk to my dog because I had a little dog. <laughs> Mine happened in the barn. And the dog would be up there, and I would talk to the dog. And you have to talk to somebody. You have to talk to somebody. That would be my words. Yep, you have to talk to somebody. What a beautiful story. And thank you. Thank you. This story was brought to you by The Woman I Love at www.thewomanilove.com. If you are starting down the path to healing, no matter what stage, our united message is that you are not alone. We do not want to live with a victim mentality. We choose to thrive, and as such, we are joining hands to spread the message that you too can heal and thrive. Will you join us as a force of change we need in our world? Only by healing, growing strong, and uniting can we create the awareness of this terrible epidemic that is plaguing our world. We heal in many different ways. There is no one right way to heal. But the right thing to do is to heal. Heal for yourself, for your families, and for our world. Will you join us in this We Choose to Thrive revolution? Reach out to us at www.thewomanilove.com. Also check out the incredible resources at www.rainn.org. And if you are actively facing abuse in this moment, do not delay. Seek out help in your local community immediately. Here is to your wellness, healing, and thriving.